I thought you looked awesome. Wait, what? Yeah. Your questions are too hard. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just this. Don't be making up. Whatever. Come on. You guys are making up. All right. Good. I like Molly, it. Molly, you can join in. Not me. Do it. So just said, you know, Amber um, was doing her uh, practical for her graduate school here at Belfon, and then she would just stay up here and take her class afterwards. But her um, son is having a really hard time at school, so she actually even had a poll from her practicum because she was having to put together like a team to basically be an advocate for her. No, you're fine. And they basically wanted to, they're trying to like get them out of school and she's not going to do it. So. Really bad. So she won't be joining us, but she wanted me to tell you guys all thank you and stuff. So yeah, she's wonderful. Yeah, so she just can't, she can't do it. Yeah. But look at you, Kathleen. I like oh, it. Have the day. Oh no, no, it's okay. You know, it was fine. It's just like a sick baby. I was babysitting another kid. My husband almost got called back into work, so I got my brother in law to take his shift so I can get here. So. And how's the baby Aww. feeling now? She well, we'll see how it goes. Okay, yeah, and feel free to leave if you have to leave. I'm glad to be here, though. Yay! Well, this one's a fun session. We'll give, should we give Provarfus another again? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So our ground rules, beyond time, open communication, time for questions and discussions, and avoid side conversations. You guys have been awesome at those. Do you guys want to add anything to that? Sweet. And since, what was that, Penny? Nothing. Okay. I just said a bad word. Oh. <laughs> totally fine. I just ripped my finger on the stapler. That's why you catch me saying a bad word. I just did that that Saturday we were here. I did so the same weird. thing. Oh. I know. Um, and you know, I will definitely, if you guys need a break and we're still going, just let me know since I know this one goes late. I know how it gets when we're getting tired. Um, and so as far as parking lot goes, last time Molly provided us with steam. And so we have handouts for everybody. Thanks to Ms. Brooke. Yay. So there's Molly's. Thank you, Ms. Molly. Um, and then... The one thing we put on parking lot, Annie had a great idea about making sure we have a table of contents, which I think will be good, especially since we have so many different papers in there. So um, we're going to check on that for you guys. And then if there's anything else that comes up, you want more information, we can definitely write it on there as well. So um, again, let's see here. So let's do our handouts first. Just going to see something else. Um, not any handouts with session 12. But let's go for lots, lots of videos tonight, and I promise they're better. Than <laughs> All right, so twelve point one is going to be an activity matrix, and I think you guys will find it really useful. Um, so if you guys don't want to write on this one, or go ahead and write on it. If you want a blank copy, we can always do that as well. Um, so there's that first one, and then twelve point two has these little chain links on it. It's instruction procedure for embedded instruction. And then 12.3, incidental teaching strategies for teaching social skills. This one I think you guys might actually reference quite a bit, especially when you're really thinking about intentional teaching. So there's a few pages to it. I believe there's three. And then the next one is going to be, it's going to say ELO at a glance. So we'll be taking a look at that one today. The next one is tip for teachers embedded learning opportunities. It's got a really nice kind of overview of it, so I really like that one. And then Teacher's Guide Embedded Learning Opportunities is the next one. Then there's Head Start Center for Inclusion Tips for Teachers, and then again about um, embedded learning opportunities. This one is a data collection form. When I first looked at it on the comp, but after I really learned how it works, I really would have liked to have used this in our classroom. I think it's a really easy, quick way to see if what you're doing is actually working. So I think you guys will definitely find that one valuable. And then 12.7 is intentional planning embedded instruction checklist. So it's a really nice run through just to see if we're doing everything that we need to be doing. And it kind of gets your brain thinking about some of that stuff. And, sorry, I might have stuff together. 12.8 is our resources. And I actually have one more resource for you that I'm gonna be sharing later. And then 12.9 is our thought seeds. So those are all the handouts for this session. So, like I said, not as many, but lots and lots of videos. So, um, you guys know where the restrooms are. If you guys are thirsty, there is the water jug is out in the um, water cooler, but you guys can always just grab some out of the sink. Um, so, if you guys need anything, just let me know. All right. So, intentional planning and better learning opportunities is going to actually be this next year. So, we're really going to look at those kids that we know are at risk for challenging behaviors. Or we, we just might know that they need some extra supports. So we're really going to look at that and kind of make sure we're weaving it in. And one thing nice is we can look at each kid's goals and kind of help them achieve that with some of these matrix and other things. So all of this is coming from Building Blocks Leap, and there's also some other evidence-based practices in there as well. So this is the framework of Building Blocks, and so this is the target social-emotional supports, but that is within that. So curriculum modifications and adaptations, that's going to be your more general, less, less um, individual stuff. Then you're going to do embedded learning opportunities, and at the top is your child-focused instruction strategies. So how are we going to really think about that one kid and how are we going to teach them that? So really getting it more individualized as we get to the top. So embedded instruction it emphasizes identifying times and activities and instruction procedures for teaching a child's priority learning targets are implemented in ongoing activities in the classroom, home, or other settings. So again, we're kind of thinking about a skill that this kid really, really needs to learn, and how are we going to make sure we're teaching them that skill in a natural environment? So in those routines that they're already always doing. 
And it's really fun for kids because we're going to be using their favorite things to make sure that we're going to get them to do what we want them to do. It might be a peer, it might be their favorite toy, but really getting down on their level and saying, what do you really want to do? So it makes it super easy for the teacher, and it makes it super easy for the parents, and it makes it super easy for the child to learn these new skills. It increases engagement, participation, and independence, and it's feasible for caregivers to use in the ongoing activities, routines, and transitions. And kind of when we're thinking about engagement, too, for children, it's important to kind of think about what that looks like, because as they get older, I know, I'll be like, ever are you listening? And he's like, yes. But he can be writing and listening at the same time. Or for younger children, we want to see um, body movement, if we're doing a song, we want to hear, hear verbal cues from them, eye contact, physical touch. So really thinking about all those kids and kind of what level are they at. Um, what are their communications going to look like? How do we know that they're engaged more than another child? Kind of thinking about that. So again, really individualized. Um, so some research. is effective for teaching children new skills. They found it to be a strategy for increasing engagement, participation, and independence, which is what we're all striving to do promote generalization and maintenance of newly learned skills, feasible for caregivers to use in the ongoing activities, routines, and transitions. So when they were really looking at research for this, of course they noticed that was great all the way even through infancy, all the way for, through early childhood and beyond. Works great for children with special needs, with challenging behaviors, it's great for everybody. So it really just helps them pack the skills. And once they've mastered a skill, it really helps them continue that ongoing maintenance of knowing I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So it's, it's, it makes it really nice. So some findings, it's effective for teaching a variety of valued skills to young children, and that goes with social, emotional, motor skills, cognitive skills, um, a whole big umbrella of different skills. A variety of instructional strategies have been embedded effectively. Embedded instruction seems to enhance journalization. So it's really, really easy to use, and it's a lot of fun. So they did this study. They had 63 children total. These were the different things that their diagnosis over here. Instructional domain selected cognitive, social, social communication, gross motor, fine motor. So these were the number of objectives that they wanted the children to reach. Um, so they did this study, and here are the outcomes. So 63 students participated, a variety of objects taught most often from a cognitive domain. 87% of children made progress and 42.86 of children achieved objective, which might not seem that many, but if, you, if we would have gave them more time, more of them probably would have met their goal. But this is the, um, you know, I'm not sure, I can check on it for you. I'm not sure how long it was. Um, I can definitely check on it for you though. Will you write that in the parking lot, bro? Mm -hmm. Sorry, no, 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 it's interesting, it is interesting. That's a good question. Um, but what they were saying is, is to kind of keep in mind that probably more of them would have achieved their goal if they would have given a longer time to do it. But really looking at 87% progress, progress, that's close to 100%. And it's kind of like on that cycle that we were learning before when we were doing the other sessions, really looking at it. And if that instruction's not working, then we go back to planning and figure out what piece aren't we doing right? What's another way we can teach that kid <coughs> this skill? And so then we'll go back to planning and again, do it again. So, but yes, we'll find out how long that study was because it is interesting. So why are we going to use it? Maximizes children's motivation by considering their interests and preferences. So we're really going to look at what's going to drive them, what motivates them. Provides opportunity to learn and practice important skills in meaningful context. Um, promotes learning, acquisition, learning skill, fluency, how well and often a child uses the new skill, and promotes mastery, maintenance, and generalization. And I think what's so great about this is once we kind of I'm telling you, you guys are already doing it and you don't even know it. But once you really look at that and you give these skills to parents to do, it's not changing their day-to-day -day at home. It's doing exactly what they're already doing, but just making a couple tweaks and being intentional about it. And so that child is learning those skills so much faster. It, it's really amazing. So, process of embedding instruction. So we're going to figure out what we want to teach. Functional, meaningful, and measurable learning targets, just like we're talking about when we're talking about goals. Um, when are we going to teach it? When is the best time for activities, routines, and transitions? When is a good time to put something in them that's going to help them? And then how are we going to teach it? What exactly is it going to look like? We're going to look at each piece of what we want to happen and really kind of plan it out. Instructional procedure that promotes engagement, learning, and mastery. And then how are we going to monitor progress? And a lot of that is just talking and figuring out 
when Molly and I would do it, like, all right, so working, did it look like it was going good? Is that what it was? And you'll sort of talk about it a little bit. Um, but we've really always talked about it. Is this plan that we made for this kiddo actually working? And if you're like, man, that felt great. They actually sat in circle today, or today I got him to really look in my eyes the whole time. Then you kind of know it's working, and you're writing it down, and you're taking a little bit of data on it. And once you see that working, then you can go back, and maybe you're going to teach another skill, or maybe you're going to up Annie. Maybe rather having them sit and do something for three minutes, or it's like, all right, now we can move up to five minutes. So really looking at it and being super intentional. So we're not just going to go fly by. We're going to really look at each piece of our day and purposefully put in little pieces to help each child. So here we are, the steps of embedding instruction. First, we're going to go with planning. And we do this all the time at conferences. We sit down and talk with all eight of our students and we say, OK, what are you guys seeing at home? What do you guys really want your child to learn here at school? Then we'll tell them some ideas that we have. And we really talk about that. We write them down. And then it's our job to figure out how are we going to make sure that these eight kids that all have a lot of different goals, some of them have the same, but some of them do not, how are we going to make sure that we're hitting every single one of their goals? Because that's important. And by doing that, it's just being super intentional. So then you're going to go into implementing. What exactly is that going to look like? And then evaluating. When I first started teaching here, I worked in the older classroom. And we had 14 kids. And they were there five days a week. So it was a little bit easier. But some of these kids, they don't come at all five days. Um, so we had to be really intentional. So what we did is we actually made a schedule. So we would focus on two kids every single day and kind of at the beginning of the year we'd kind of figure out, okay, this is we're going to hit these two this day and really kind of focus on what we wanted them to do. And then after that, once we kind of had our embedded learning opportunities and our intentional teaching strategies in place, we were able to make that part of our routine and do it every single day. And then we knew we were hitting every single kid and their goals. So. So what are we going to teach them? So again, you're going to go back to your team just like we did before. We are talking about we're going to develop functional goals and outcomes, just like you guys are writing for your kids in your vignettes. So here's an example. I'm not going to read them verbatim, but just like we are talking about how specific they need to be, the context of when they're going to do it, how they're going to do it, and how do we know they're doing it, how do we know they're making progress. So just like we just did. Um, when are we going to teach it? So we're going to decide when to embed the instruction. But we want it across all environments and throughout all of the day because then we'll know we're going to be mastering that skill. And it's super easy, so it's not going to be hard to do. So um, right now, if you guys want to pull out 12.1, we're going to be talking about activity matrix. So it helps ensure that learning occurs. So we're going to fill this out for your um, vignette or we're going to fill it out for a kid in your practice. I'll talk a little bit more about it, but just keep this out. So it's really interesting to think about, and then once you kind of plan it out, it can be really, really helpful, especially for when you have some different age groups. Um, you can go to the next slide. We're going to talk about it first. So first thing you can do, you can do multiple children. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to write down your schedule, kind of what you do. This is getting, will probably look a lot different um, at home. It could be done for anything. It could even be done for like the grocery store or something simple like that. But you're going to write down arrival, all your kind of planned out days, and then you're going to think about your kids and what are the goals that you really want them to learn. So obviously for John, it looks like they're really wanting him to do some turn taking. Uh, really looks like they wanting him to seek attention and puts on coat. Maybe that's another simple thing they want him to work on. And for Sarah, they want her to work on expressing emotions, play organizer, um, and makes a choice. So it looks like they have that done in a few things. So they really kind of looked at the times and said, okay, well, at arrival, he can greet friends. And when she signs in, we can hit this one on feelings and emotions. Table time, her taking, that's when they're going to do that. And right here, maybe she's going to be the table captain. So that's how we're going to get her, get her to hit that goal. And then for right here, seeks attention. Maybe he's going to pass out the props. And she's going to make a choice on the song board. And again, maybe in centers, we're going to help her be the play organizer and do some emotion <laughs> stuff. He can be turn taking. So you can see how you can really embed it in there and figure it out. And then we're going to give you strategies for what would this look like, a play organizer at centers. Lots of times, kids will go in the center and maybe, I don't know, I sorry, my stuff here, right? These are yours. No, you're fine. And there's that for that same stuff. Um, we have a lot of kids that. Maybe they don't have a baby at home, and maybe they don't know how to take care of it. I know Everett had baby Stucky, and baby Stucky he was very, very good with, and he could wrap it up. 
And Gus was a chucker. He just thought that was because he had never been really around a lot of babies other than Cindy's house. But to really put him in that playgroup with a baby and maybe a bottle and a blanket, and maybe you have a sign up. Maybe first you're going to brush the baby's hair. You're going to wrap the baby up. Then maybe you rock it. Really giving them some concrete ideas with little pictures on what to do. Some kids don't, don't know how to play kitchen yet. So really teaching them all those things. So kind of just putting up little signs in your thing. So we're going to show you a bunch of different things on what that looks like. But it's kind of nice because then you can make sure that for these two kids, you're going to be hitting it at every portion of their day. So it makes it really, really nice. Then you can also make it for one kid. So then again, you would put down their schedule, and then you're going to put down the three things they're working on, or maybe it's two things, maybe it's even one thing. And then you're going to say, okay, well, we can definitely do that at arrival time. We can do this one at table time. Maybe we can do both of these at morning circle. So you can kind of really focus on where you're going to hit that at. So um, we're going to do the matrix here in a minute. Sorry. Benefits of embedded instruction throughout daily routines. The family has the opportunity throughout the day to encourage the child to practice and learn the new skill. Um, the child is also more likely to achieve desired outcomes, develop in a partnership between the family and the rest of their early intervention team, and the family can maintain typical lives while supporting the development of their child. So that's number one thing. We're not changing the routine. We're keeping it same, but just enhancing it. So this is a video of, of a mom, and she ha is, has a baby, and she's going to change their, her diaper. And really, all she's doing, she you wouldn't think it by just watching it, but now that we're kind of trying to look for what they're teaching, she actually has a goal that she's trying to reach with this child. So as you watch it, I want you to see what kind of goal she's trying to achieve with this baby, and think about maybe what they're kind of working on at home. So it's really short. All these videos are super short. This video clip shows a mother playing at home with her infant son, splashing in the bathroom, and playing peekaboo while putting on his diaper. She was working on cause and effect, maybe eye contact. And yeah, and with all that, what's so cool about it, it's totally, again, reinforcing that relationship piece, that bond. And it, it's kind of cool. So something as simple as playing peekaboo with a baby is going to be an embedded learning opportunity. So it, it's just something that you're going to kind of put in your day. Okay, we're going to do this here and there. But as we get older in classrooms with kids that are a little bit older, we're gonna, it might look a lot different, obviously. Um, super cute, though. There's a ton, a ton of these people. So right now, I'm thinking about like just something as simple as that, or it could be something more complicated, like actually making them a play team. I want you to think, and if you guys don't want to use your vignettes for this, if you want to use a child that you have in your practice and you're thinking about, man, they could, this would be helpful for them. Um, I know I'm going to start thinking about some things for Everett and Gus. So um, I think you could totally do it on your own kids, or if you want to do it on your vignettes, we'll still pass those out. But I'll leave it totally up to you guys. But think about... Think about making an activity matrix and being super intentional in your entire day of planning and what that would look like. So, does anyone have any questions? Yeah. So one child. Yep, I would do one child. Yeah. Yep. Can I work on Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. You guys are a good team. Mm -hmm. hey, does anyone have any questions? Can I show like, the tissue Yes. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Same way. Yeah. Oh, 
We're going to go back to. Uh, you want that one or do you want this one? Okay. Yeah. Well, they're only going to do one. Yeah. But yeah, so you could do one or two. Yeah. And so. Exactly. Exactly. I did. You could pause it. Yeah. Yeah. So I would definitely write over here the. So Jessica was just asking, but over here. So you're going to write the goals that you're thinking of for this kid that they need. So and maybe it's from the one you already made in your vignette, the, the ones that you're planning out. So you're gonna write their goals right here and then you're gonna write down their activities in a certain part of their day or maybe it's the whole day. And then you're, you're gonna write, fill it in on how you're gonna hit those. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I do, do that, do your one, that, your one little one. Well, you know what, so, now everything is changing. How cool is that? That's awesome. She's great. Oh, she's great. Now I have an 11 month old baby mm -hmm. who, who is cutting his teeth. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then he got sick. So mom held him for 10 days straight. Oh, no. Oh, no. And now when I lay him down, he screams at the top of his lungs. And I know the name is going to bring That's how long it is. No, wait for nap time. So oh, he had some morning and then so after nap time. Mm -hmm. He's just screaming all the way through it. So I go in and check on him every 15 minutes and I say, shh. Yeah, because I did that. I was talking to Brooke. I did that with my little 18 month old. She goes and lays right. I showed her pictures. Yeah. And this is what we do. We have lunch and we're going to go lay down. So now I'm trying to figure out. Okay, yeah. So I'm like, what am I going to do with this baby? I don't know what to do with this baby. I've tried like the sound, here she is. Loving. Um, loving. I've tried. Like, I love you. And then watch. Well, I've never done that in the room with that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm like, no, 